Hi, today we are going to talk about the evolution of social media entertainment, the rise of TikTok, and how an artist from the 60s had an uncanny prediction of how fame will look like today. The artist is nobody else than Andy Warhol, the man who drew soup cans, was turning art exhibitions into supermarkets, and was spending $2,000 a year on chocolate cake in this cute little cafe in New York called Serendipity. However, he also was the one that came up with the following phrase that would predict the way we consume media quite in an accurate way. In the future, everyone will be world famous for 15 minutes. The phrase 15 minutes of fame today describes the short-lived publicity or fame of an individual or a phenomenon. It means that anybody and anything can become famous, even for a short amount of time. Does any of this sound familiar to you? It's because when you think about what memes are usually a one-time burst of fame coming from a very random people. Some of them get to capitalize on the fame and keep a following, but most of them you will only know because of one or two videos after which they will fall again into irrelevance. But how did Andy Warhol, the man that never really got to experience the internet, have such a clear understanding on how media will be shared in the modern day? Andy Warhol was quite a peculiar man, at least to the people at that time. He would be made fun of for always wearing a recorder and a camera on himself, and would record daily conversations, places, and just ordinary stuff. I wonder if we have such a portable recording device with which we daily take 5,000 photos of food and cats? But most importantly, he worked on the democratization of art, always asking himself who gets to decide what's popular and important and who gets to decide what's famous. Well, in the past, one of the most important sharing mediums would be the television that would require auditions, financing and interviews in several offices. Now you can just upload a video on the internet of a cat and wait for it to blow up. Fame became more than ever accessible to anybody and everybody. Social media has become the main sharing medium. How much time did you spend watching television today? Now, how many hours did you mindlessly scroll through Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube page? We turned from morning shows to YouTube vlogs and from comedy shows to memes and vines. But to understand social media, we need to first understand the internet. The first social media platform appeared in 1997 and was called Six Degrees. They had this little funky design. The main is based on six degrees of separation, which is a theory that says that all people know each other through six or fewer people. So in theory, I may have a common acquaintance with Phoebe Bridgers, which is a nice thing to think about. The relevancy of six degrees did not last a long time, but shortly other social media starting rising like MySpace and LinkedIn. YouTube came out in 2005, creating a new way for people to communicate through videos. One year later, the f platform and Twitter became available, and they are still one of the most used platforms. To the point that if you don't have an account, you virtually do not exist and people ask what's wrong with you. And although when I start to think too much about social media, I want more and more to walk into the ocean, it is an undeniable fact that social media has become the main tool of this age to engage, communicate and connect with the biggest audience ever imaginable till now. Almost 4.66 billion people are connected to internet as of October 2020. Internet has turned from a commodity to an absolute human right at this point. This especially became evident when the Panacotta started roaming around. And many of us were all stuck home trying to figure out how to be productive in pajama pants. But while the content on the internet became bigger and bigger, the attention span of people became smaller and smaller. I should know you're only watching 30% of my video's length. Also, I wanted to make a shout out to my very first and only YouTube subscriber in this video, but then my account kind of blew up and now I get to say hello to my three subscribers. Hi. It's an interesting paradox because the average video length on YouTube has become bigger and bigger, mainly because the algorithm pushes videos with a long watch time, since YouTube wants you to stay watching on the platform as long as possible. At the same time, the death of Vine created a vacuum for shorter videos, which now starts to be filling out but none other than the most exciting and problematic platform. And here we finally get to talk of the devil. TikTok blew up last few months, now with almost half a billion active users. For those not familiar that actually have a life, TikTok is a video sharing platform of videos between 3 seconds and 1 minute that is owned by the Chinese company ByteDance. 
What was initially thought of as an education sharing platform or even a singing app from its predecessor Musical.ly, it morphed today into a vine slash memes slash dancing Frankenstein. On TikTok, becoming a creator has never been easier. You film a video which you can speed up or speed down, cut and add filters, and you're good to go. You can easily insert audio bits from different songs, movies, or even YouTube videos. And because of the many challenges, trends, response videos, and do it, it answers really quickly the questions of what should I post today. It offers the unique possibility of becoming a creator and achieving fame without actually creating any original content. That is not to say that nobody on TikTok creates original content. There are many funny and talented people that I absolutely enjoy watching. TikTok can be such a great tool for sharing ideas, talent, and funny moments, but it does not mean that we should turn a blind eye to all the problematic stuff. The app never really caught on me. I just figured if a video on TikTok will be so good, it will transpire to other social media like Tumblr, the only perfect social media platform that I got stuck in 2013 and never figured out how to live. We do be having a chronological timeline though. TikTok with its catchy visuals, almost cartoonesque facial expressions and an inherent obsession with conventionally pretty prepubescent boys has become really fast the most consumerist approach to art that we get to see through the history. And while many would refrain from calling dancing teenagers an art performer, the truth is that the line between media, art, and internet content has become so thin it virtually disappeared. We see art as something old, grandiose, and overwhelming, but Andy Warhol argued against this misconception. Pop art, the current that Andy was part of, came into existence at a time of mass consumerism and mass production. It would blur the line between high art and commercial art by producing flattened, depersonalized, and objectified art. One great example is one of his famous uh, paintings that would cement his influence in pop art, the Merlin Diptych. In it, Warhol would challenge the idea that art should inherently be original and irreproducible. The two-part work shows repetitive heads which would suggest something like postage stamps or billboard posters, thus art becoming a commodity, a perishable product, something that you can go and grab at your local supermarket. In a very similar way, the content on TikTok is repetitive and meme-esque. People repeat video ideas sometimes frame by frame with only slight variations and can gain millions and millions of views. The challenge videos are very reminiscent of the artworks that Warhol was making, of Campbell soups and cola bottles, but the most important feature that by far sets TikTok apart from all the other social media and makes the 15 minutes of fame concept even more relatable today, I think is the addition of the For You page. The For You page is the page that is shown when you open up the app. Anybody can pop up in the For You page since it shows content promoted by the algorithm and not by your own subscriptions. It learns about your interests and caters to the specific kind of content that it thinks you would enjoy, making TikTok more machine than man. Other social media have a timeline in which you only see content from people you follow, but the For You page on TikTok instead connects you to newer and newer content creators. This is what'll change the way we create and consume content. TikTok looks away from many of the assumptions that other social media platforms were built on. It questions the necessity for limited connections. It unapologetically embraces central control rather than pretending it doesn't have it. TikTok's real influence going forward may be that other social media platforms decide that limiting our feed to our friends and celebrities we follow was simply holding us back, or at least it was holding them back. On TikTok, you don't necessarily have to have a niche. You can just jump from trend to trend. This article on the New York Times summarizes very well the TikTok experience in that it creates something like simulated temporary friend groups who get together to do friend group things, to share an inside joke, to riff on a song, to talk idly and aimlessly about whatever it is in front of you. Feedback is instant and frequently abundant. Virality has a stiff tailwind. Stimulation is constant, there is an unmistakable sense that you're using something that's expanding in every direction. 
the pool of content is enormous. Andy Warhol also had a clear vision of how computers and algorithms will dictate how we live our daily lives and what media we will consume. He would say that a computer would be a very qualified boss, and it's interesting to think that a computer or an AI algorithm basically tells us what to watch every day. Andy got his first computer from Commodore International and would later become their brand ambassador. Andy Warhol, the first influencer, for the launch of the computer, he would plan a theatrical performance which featured rock and roll icon Debbie Harry. For a live audience, he would create a portrait of the singer, the Campbell Soup and the Botticelli's The Birth of Venus. The collaboration is a testament to Warhol's engagement and embrace of technology. Computers now are essential not only in the day-to-day -day life, but in how we perceive and enjoy art. The golden touch of fame by the AI algorithm of TikTok has become a just out of reach aspiration for millions of content creators on the platform. But the promise of virality proved to be even more attractive for younger audiences, as we have seen. We have a lot of underage dancing and singing and making jokes, but also sometimes problematic content. More and more people are talking about the toxicity and the bad influence of, on mental health of using and creating on TikTok at such a young age. I like the way it is designed and how easy it is to go viral and the shock value and the this and the that. All these teenagers want to go viral so badly and are really compromising their morals and putting their reputation at risk in the real world for a bit of clout on TikTok. That's my issue with the app because it's like going viral is not necessarily always a good thing. If anything, it's probably more of a curse than it is a blessing. We've seen this many times before because really what does it do for you? You know, especially if you go viral off of something like a shock value TikTok, what does that do for you? It's so frivolous. And this is what these teenagers are aspiring for. It's what they're wanting to do. You wouldn't do this in regular situations on other platforms, but for some reason on TikTok, just for a little drop of cloud, you guys are exploiting yourself essentially. What sets TikTok apart is the people are encouraged to put on shock value content without really thinking about any consequences for their real life, all in the name of the possible few seconds of fame. But is this only TikTok or is this a general way in how we consume media today? I'd argue it's both. TikTok would not have become so popular if there wasn't a need for this kind of content and these mechanics of sharing. But at the same time, the TikTok algorithm and the way platform is built takes it to a whole new level that we are kind of just putting up with. From the absolute scary challenges that are putting people into hospitals, which I would not even mention, but if you want, Daniel Wallace did a great video on that, to all the racist, sexist and ableist jokes that are labeled as dark humor, TikTok is on a sure path of becoming a cautionary tale. I cannot help but wonder, for how long is this able to go on till we actually set up some regulations and policies that would protect both the creators and the audience watching? The 15 minutes of fame can be a blessing or a curse. It gives the opportunity for new and fresh talent to arise from anywhere in the world indifferent to status, money, nationality or pre-existing fame. At the same time, the promise of virality is promoting people to put up content only for the sake of becoming famous, which is promptly encouraged by the TikTok algorithm and labeled as a valid aspiration. And although Andy Warhol may not have seen the future of media consumption as 14-year-old dancing kids in front of millions of screens, he was quite spot on on how accessible fame will become, while at the same time short-lived and frivolous. When everybody is famous, what does fame even mean then? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun researching this topic and delving into the TikTok discussion frenzy. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I am uploading videos every Sunday. And if you enjoyed this video, show it to the almighty algorithm by liking or commenting under the video. Hope you're having a great day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.